Good morning and welcome to this morning's reflection. Well, come on in and sit down. And let's just be still for a moment. Just becoming aware of God's loving presence. I'd like to begin by reading Psalm 130, or a verse from Psalm 130. My soul waits for you. I count on your word. Commitment and enthusiasm are two concepts that are, unfortunately, often confused. Commitment is that quality of life that depends more on the ability to wait for something to come to fulfilment through good days and through bad than it does on being able to sustain an emotional extreme for it over a very long period of time. Enthusiasm is excitement fed by satisfaction. The tangle of these two ideas, however, is exactly what leads so many people to fall off in the middle of a project. When the work ceases to feel good, when praying for peace gets nowhere, when the marriage counselling fails to reinvigorate the marriage, when the projects and plans and the hopes worse than fail, they fizzle, that's when the commitment really starts. When enthusiasm wanes and romantic love dies and moral apathy a debilitating loss of purpose and energy sets in. That is the point at which we are asked to give as much as we get. That's when what we thought was an adventure turns into commitment. Sometimes a long, hard, demanding one that tempts us to despair as if God will ever abandon the good, as if waiting for God's good time were a waste of our time, as if God's word of love will ever fail us in the end. Commitment is that quality of human nature that tells us not to count days or months or years, conversations or efforts or rejections, but simply to go on going on until all things are in the fullness of time, until everything is ready, until all hearts are in waiting for the word of God in this situation to be fulfilled. When we feel most discouraged, most fatigued, most alone, when we feel these things, then it is precisely the time that we must not give up. Dante said the hottest places in hell are reserved for those who in times of great moral crisis maintain their neutrality. The greatest thing of all is caring, wrote Friedrich von Hugel. Caring is everything, and he should know. Von Hugel was a lay theologian whose work helped to usher in the era of modern theology and scripture study, and he knew resistance on every side from the church that he loved. Yet he persisted, and his legacy lives on. 
By the way, even in the face of all that pressure, these were his last words that he said on his deathbed. Now that is commitment. Remember, the greatest thing of all is caring. Caring is everything. How do you know when you're really committed to something? It's easy. When what happens to that thing still affects you, then you are committed to it, whatever the discomfort of it all. May West once said, too much of a good thing is wonderful. How freeing. Commitment, that insight implies, is the ability to go overboard for something. If you're not unbalanced about something in life, you haven't really begun to live. There's a story told about a Zen monk in Japan, and he wanted to publish some holy writings, which at the time were available only in Chinese. And the books were to be printed with wooden blocks in an edition of 7,000 copies, which was a tremendous undertaking. And so the monk began travelling and collecting donations for this purpose. A few sympathisers would give him a hundred pieces of gold, but most of the time he received only small coins. And over ten years he eventually managed to gather together enough money for the task. But then there was a terrible flood in the area and a famine followed. So the monk took the funds that he had collected and he spent them to save others from starving. And then he began his work of collecting again. Fifteen years later there was an epidemic which spread throughout the country and so to help his people the monk again gave away all that he had collected. Then for a third time he started to collect money and after 20 years his wish was fulfilled. The books were printed. The printing blocks which produced the first edition of those books can be seen today in the monastery in Kyoto. The Japanese, however, tell their children that the monk really made three sets of holy books and they explain with great pride that the first two invisible books surpassed the third. It takes great effort to keep the passion of commitment burning. Try to rekindle the passion in one commitment that you may have that has waned in your life today. Perhaps it's a promise you made. Or maybe there is a personal relationship that needs a real commitment. Or a cause of justice or peace. Or the spreading of the gospel. Take one action today to try to rekindle the flame of commitment. And may you be blessed as you do that. Amen.